the Lord in our heart, guiding our life and our worship in the local churches. Although we worship the Lord, many of us do not know the importance of worship. Many of us do not know or do not realize that God is using us when we worship God through praise and worship. And so including the leaders as well as the worshipers, we need to talk about the importance of praise and worship today. And especially for young people today, worship is very important. And true praise and worship, we can minister to many young people in Nagaland and outside Nagaland. And so I wish you all the best, especially our worship teams and also all the people who have come to uh, worship the Lord with this praise festival. Just um, an announcement for all of us that today's program, uh, the live YouTube will be you know, telecast in um, www.youtube.com slash user slash high down media, high down media, okay? So all our program today, whatever is uh, happening here will be also telecast in this YouTube. And so uh, God bless all of us through this program and may God use all the uh, worship teams and also all the congregation. And right now, let me say a word of prayer and also we will give time to uh, the Chagasan Baptist Church, Minister Hill. Let's all look to God in prayer. God, our Father in heaven, we want to thank you for this day. We want to thank you for the opportunity for the young people to come and worship you and to celebrate you because you are the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, Lord. Bless the entire program from beginning till the end. For we pray and commit the entire program into your hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are here for our Lord. We, are, we gathered here because of the name Jesus Christ. I believe we gathered here in the name. If I say God is good and all the time, I know that God is truly good. I want to thank uh, even the NBC team, the NCTV, having a burden for our young people. Even though we are few in number, but God is going to move mightily. That is what I believe. I was praying about this uh, praise celebration. And I know that God is going to put something into our heart. It is what some people are going to start prophetic art. Some people are going to do even prophetic dance. And I believe that God is going to put songs into our heart this day. Because our God is a very creative God. Our God is amazing God who created the heavens and the earth and because of that we are grateful to God and we give honor and glory to our Lord no one in this place is similar to one another except we have two eyes one nose one mouth one one heart two ears two legs that's similar but everything God has what God has created is Amazing. Shall we give hand to our Lord for His creativity? Amen. Shall we stand at our feet? Hallelujah. Shall we shout hallelujah? hallelujah? The Word of God says, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. We want to give glory and honor to our God. This is not a place for entertainment, but this is a place to worship 
our dear King, our dear Father, our dear Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is our best friend because of that name Jesus. We are here and we want to proclaim, we want to declare His name. Amen. Should we give another hand to our Lord? Hallelujah. To the King.
I find my rest without you I fall apart you're the one that guides my heart Lord I
you are worthy. This is what the word of the Lord says. Day and night, they never stop saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creature gives glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The 24 elders fall down before him and who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy. Receive 
what the word of God says. And Lord, this day we gathered here to give you glory and honor because you deserve it. And we give you honor and glory and praise to you. This moment belongs to you. And we give thanks to you all for this day. In your name we give you honor and glory. Amen. Amen. Shall we give hand to our dear God? Hallelujah. You may say, God is good. All the time. And all the time. God, God is, is good. good. God is good. I've come to realize that in this world, the most important thing to do is just worship. The most important thing to do is just worship. Just worship the Lord and then, yeah, our God will take care of everything. Okay, good afternoon once again, friends. Hope you are doing good. Such a joy to be here. The topic assigned to me is uh, worship and it's uh, dynamic and uh, uh, worship in the local churches. So b before I go further, this is not a, uh, as assigned to me, but uh, since I'm starting, like my other friends will also uh, Share, but yeah, I would just like to start with this. Uh, according to me, I think worship is very uh, deep to explain. That is what I've come to realize. But uh, this is what I uh, write it. And then this is what I uh, want to uh, explain a bit about what is worship. When we submit our full being, our everything to him with love knowing that he is worthy of it all everything that is what uh, uh, submit with love so I have come to also realize and Ed Deblut also says this we can love without worship we can surrender without worship we can adore without worship we can torture ourselves without worship we can praise without worship we can admire without worship but we cannot worship without love we cannot worship without honor respect admiration surrender so that means worship is everything everything And in uh, Matthew 4, 8 to 10, when uh, we see this, nah, it's so am amazing. Uh, you know, I know that uh, this is, the uh, Bible didn't mention about that this is Lucifer, but uh, uh, I know that this is Lucifer, okay. Uh, you know, uh, some months ago, I don't know, yeah, last year, in, in, the, in my vision, God uh, showed uh, to me, uh, a picture of Lucifer. I, I thought that he was, uh, uh, he must be very ugly, that's what I used to think. But uh, I think one of the most handsome men, that is what I have seen. Uh, the most handsome man, uh, uh, in the top uh, one, uh, the most uh, attractive and handsome man is uh, the Twilight Saga star. That is what uh, uh, I was just go uh, going through. And then, well, what is his name? Robert? So I don't even know, okay? Anyway, yeah. But I know that uh, he's the one, okay? And then, but I think he cannot even compare to that uh, uh, being Lucifer. No? It's too handsome. And then, so that is what, uh, I just want to share this. And he's too handsome, he's too... But he has got a deceiving face. Deceiving, Jokai Dela face, no? He has got a Jokai Dela face. And then I told myself, that, Lord, do I need to fear this uh, being? So that is what I... Uh, in my spirit, I yeah, uh, prayed and, uh, to God. And then uh, the moment I prayed that, uh, the Spirit of the Lord gave me a word. And then the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Indeed, Lucifer fears you. That is what uh, the Spirit of the Lord put in my heart. And I really thank God for that. Matthew 4, 8 to 10, it says, even Lucifer wants to, even the Satan, the demon, the Satan, Satan wants to take that worship. It says that all splendor and glory 
I will give you if you worship me. So that is what they uh, even see the creator and the, the created being. Uh, Lucifer is a created being and uh, our Lord Jesus Christ is the creator. And then the created being asking his creator to say, worship me if I give, uh, if you worship me, I will give all the splendor and glory which has been delivered to me, I will give you back. So I think it's so funny. And then that will not happen, I know, but yeah. Uh, th that was uh, the created being asking the creator to worship him. So if we have created laptop or, okay, if you have created anything, laptop or anything, and then uh, if the laptop or anything that we have created ask us to worship uh, the laptop or anything that we have created, then it is so funny. No? So I find so funny uh, that uh, line. So th that means, even Lucifer wants to take that worship because of that he fall with into the pride. So that is what I have come to realize. Okay, coming back uh, to, yeah, I just want to uh, put uh, some of the acts of worship before I go to my topic. Uh, uh, clapping, shouting, singing, bowing, kneeling, lifting, dancing, standing, trusting, obedience, or even uh, prostrating, serving, be still and name. These are just an expression of worship. This can be worship. This cannot even be a worship. Huh? Prayer can be a worship. Prayer cannot even be a worship. Huh? Kneeling can be a worship. Kneeling cannot even be a worship. Huh? Loving can be a worship. Loving cannot even be a worship. That is what I come to realize. But when we don't have that Jesus Christ and when we have a right attitude about Jesus surrendering a heart, every being to Him. Okay, I just come back. Uh, yeah, I will give uh, those things to our uh, fellow friends uh, who will be coming up. But I just want to tell with uh, worship team dynamics. Nah? I just want to tell this. Okay, uh, we we, uh, we we want to be very. We want to take very simple in you know, a grassroots level because I started with a grassroots level. So I just want to uh, share this. Uh, worship is not about the size of the band. We need to have everything. It's not that. That is what I, uh, I know. And it's not even about uh, this. Uh, we need to have the whole set of things, drums, uh, keyboard, uh, bass, electric guitar, or even a microphone. No? But uh, yeah, we need to communicate with one another. So we need that. But uh, worship is not even about uh, uh, those uh, uh, set of band or size of band. But it's a willing heart that we have a burden, we are willing hard to take the burden for His glory in worshiping, in singing. Singing can be a part of worship. Singing cannot even be a part of worship. So it's not even about the size of the band. That is what I've come to realize. 1997, um, our own pastor, he started a, a worship. Uh, he's our senior pastor now. He started uh, the worship uh, a Western kind of a Western, whatever we are doing is uh, all Western praise and worship style, which we are doing. Uh, yeah, we have our own, uh, even our uh, forefathers or our elder uh, elders, they also have their own kind of set of uh, a worship kind of thing. And even, and then uh, we have uh, take this Western culture and into our scenario, and then it, which is also very good, and we really praise God for that. And in 1997, our senior pastor has started this uh, Western kind of praise and worship to our church. And then I uh, joined the worship team in the year 2003. I was born again in the year 2000, uh, 1999. Uh, and then uh, the, the moment I was born again, God put this worship, uh, the burden of worship in, into my heart. And then I started uh, with, with a guitar. And then uh, during those days, uh, oh, Steve Coben, uh, and then Michael De Blue Smith are uh, into uh, uh, those times era. And after that, Hill songs and uh, the different kind of worship came. And then, yeah, and then now battle and uh, every, many uh, worship leaders are around the world. And uh, we really praise God for that. So we just want to put this way. Um, many, many people, the worship leaders are here. So I just want to encourage one thing. If some of you have already started a worship ministry. Some of you are yet to start. 
So how many of you have, I just want to ask this, how many of you have uh, worship, proper set, proper worship team in your church? Can you lift your hand? Proper worship team. Yeah. And then how many of you are, uh, do, uh, sometimes you do worship in a church, but uh, you are yet to set the proper worship team? Okay, nobody. That means all of Okay, and then any church do not have a worship team? No. That means we all have a proper worship team, no? I believe. Then that's good. Then I, I must leave this place. <laughs> because, yeah. Okay. Um, so our worship team, uh, uh, the proper set of worship team, we started in the year 2009. 2000, uh, 1997, our pastor started, and then we journey, and I joined the worship team in the year 2003. But the proper worship team, which we always meet on Tuesday uh, in the year 19, uh, 2009, and then every Tuesday we meet. This is what I just want to put very uh, simple, where if we want to start a worship team, worship team dynamic starts with prayer. That is what I have come to realize. Worship team dynamic starts with prayer and prayer. So this year, and then, yeah, uh, we have made a statement. Our worship team has made a statement where we say, if you don't pray daily, if you don't read the word of God daily, if I don't read the word of God daily, if I don't pray daily, I'm not qualified to lead worship. So as you, you are not qualified to lead worship. That is our statement that we, we have made and God has helped us. And if there is anybody you have set a worship team and yet to read the word of God, yet to pray daily, then I think we have to think this uh, again. And then the worship team starts for, uh, there. About the band dynamics and all, I will give, uh, yeah, my fellow friends will tell that. Okay, we have also, time is limited, so I just want to come to the uh, thing about uh, worship in the local churches. Okay, worship in the local churches. I'm sure, uh, how many of you do hymns in the church? Sunday morning you watching hymns, no? Yeah. Okay. So we also do hymns, no? We also do hymns, uh, hymn singing. And which is also very good, okay? I just, everything, the, the contemporary songs that we are singing is also worship. The hymn singing is also worship. So I think uh, right now, three things is happening to our scenario. That is what I have come to realize. One thing is that when we sing revival song, like, uh, oh, that is, when we sing those things, we, uh, we put this way. It will do revival like Ganaze. Nah? This is revival song. Revival. And then when we say, shout to the Lord, all the earth, nah? I do the praise and worship. Nah? And then when we say, Him, nah? uh, oh Lord my God, when I, it will be she traditional orthodox worship. Nah? That is what we put in, in a way. <laughs> do you get it? So I also put that way, but everything is worship. Everything. And then uh, I just want to put this away because uh, uh, we really, and then uh, yeah, my friends are also here, we want to also try this, how we do in our church, we want uh, to do together. Uh, how, how do we sing our own local, local dialect, uh, worshiping the Lord with our own local dialect? We also want to do uh, one song or two and then so that we can able to, uh, even as we go back home, as we go back to our own church, we can also uh, try this song. So yeah, uh, I just want to try this. Uh, I just want to give a bit of the music history, okay? Which, uh, yeah, uh, medieval, medieval music happened in the year uh, 500 AD to 1400 AD. Baroque period, uh, Renaissance, Renaissance uh, period came in, in the year 1400 AD to uh, 1600. And then Baroque period happened. Baroque period happened in the year 1680 to 1730 AD, where uh, because of the art, okay, art, monads, sunrise art, they have made it, and then through that they try to express it out, and then the music happened during those period. And then uh, Renaissance, and then Baroque period during those period, uh, 
they started to sing hymns and some people sing chanting na no? oh like that na no? Uh, they used to do chant uh, in the church, no? and then during those days, uh, Protestant were happening. Protestant uh, Martin Luther and then uh, uh, the, the crew they, they were also coming, uh, trying to come out of the, this Catholic Roman Catholic Church and all. And then Protestant thing were happening, and then uh, the songs were uh, mainly hymns and all during those days. And then they worship the Lord with hymns, no? so. Oh, secret has wandered. So they sing in that way. And then uh, the, the era has uh, become an era of chanting. Gregorian chanted is what they do. And then after where Baroque period came, Baroque period is a bit kind of classical thing, but classic, after Baroque period is classical, Baroque period happens with uh, more of uh, yeah, more slur and then more of staccato thing. That is what uh, uh, they used to sing. No? Uh, like uh, in a sense, Handel Messiah, this uh, thing came. No? Hallelujah, hallelujah. So that is what it ha happened. Or see, uh, recitative and those things happen. And then they worship even the Lord with that. So I just want to, and all those were the worship songs. And then classical thing happened. And then we, many of us, we sing classical hymns no? of uh, 18th century and 19th century songs. Uh, these hymns have been a uh, uh, many of the hymns have been uh, written in the, uh, in the classical period and romantic period, and then we sing this song. And then why uh, during those days they go into their pattern? See, holy, holy, holy. So when they go into some pattern, uh, it is so difficult to uh, sometimes the rhythm and the timing. Also, uh, we focus more onto the rhythm and timings. Were uh, we. Uh, we cannot able to focus much on the word. That is what uh, it also happens. So the classical thing and all, they also try to express it, but uh, they go, go more into the rhythm, they go more into the dynamics of the song where they cannot have a free kind of uh, worshiping the, uh, the Lord. But still they worship the Lord and then protesting heaven. Amazing grace happened during those period. Amazing grace. But I think uh, uh, nowadays in this 21st uh, Late 20th century and 21st century, we have changed some rhythm. We have changed with uh, into a romantic kind of uh, setting, into a contemporary kind of setting where we sing, "Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound," and we mean more of the uh, word. Or else, during those days, "Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound." Every note, every uh, line has its own uh, chord. So when we focus on all those chords, it's so difficult to focus and, and express it fully. So th that is what it happened uh, during the classical period and then uh, Baroque period. And then some of the song I just want to... So, and we, with that we want to connect uh, to our worship, okay. So some of the songs like, uh, see, mm. Yeah, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which we have sung, is from the classical period song. And then uh, they used to do like this. Nah? Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. And then every line has its own chord. Chang, 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 chang. So every line has a chord. So because of that, when we go into that pattern of rhythm, I, I've, our focus has go into the more into the rhythm and more into the chords and uh, uh, rather express uh, into the fullness of the song. But uh, I think we have also done some of the, we have changed some patterns where we also uh, change some uh, chord as well and into a, simpl into a simpler pattern and then we also uh, yeah, do into a very contemporary sli style. Uh, so yeah, the, 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 this is what uh, we do, and then we want to sing uh, maybe two, two songs where uh, how, how we do uh, in our own local di dialect song, okay, with the uh, traditional music. So when you go back home in a church, when we do, uh, yeah, for some uh, English service we can do anything. But when we go to our own church, we have our own local people, we have our own people who uh, they cannot able to grab uh, uh, the English, 
but uh, they, they are very comfortable with uh, hymns and all. So uh, how can we connect with the younger generation and the older generation? So we well, just, just, just like to do one thing, okay? Uh, yeah. So this is what we do, okay? And then uh, we're, we're going to sing in our local dialect, and then uh, you can also join us with English, okay? Sometimes we transpose it and then we do in our local church. I'm sure uh, this will help one another. This is what we, uh, yeah. So this is what we do uh, 
we change the rhythm, we change uh, in a very simple way where even the young people, the old people can gather and then uh, worship the Lord. We also sing some, uh, we call it revival song, where yeah, we call it as a praise and worship song. Uh, yeah, great change since I was born. That is what we also do. So in a way where we can able to connect with the younger generation or older generation. I think right now, uh, him singing is also very important because the meaning of the meaning and then the composer has composed in such a way, very deep meaning. I think we need to come out uh, with uh, and refine our worship in, uh, into this generation. When we sing 17, 18, 19th century songs in this uh, uh, generation, it is so difficult to connect with the younger people, as well as even the older people, it's so difficult uh, to go with these 17, 18, 19th century songs, even 20th century songs. So it's so difficult to connect uh, with. But I think uh, as, a, uh, as a worship leader or here, the pastors, if any pastors are here, or the worship leader, the music director, I think one of my concerns is that I think we need to gather together. And then I will also request our MBCC team, uh, if uh, you can able to organize a platform where we can gather and then refine our worship songs, our own worship songs, where some people are so uh, good and give that in writing songs as well. And we can also uh, in, uh, improvise uh, the hymns and all, and then the church worship, especially a majority of our Naga churches are traditional type of church where we sing local songs, we sing hymns in a local dialect. If we can able to, uh, if we can able to impro impro uh, improvise and then if we can able to make those things, that will really help our uh, local church. Even though young people we enjoy praise and worship, but as a church we want everyone to enjoy the presence of the Lord where uh, we sing uh, with passionate thing the song. In, into, uh, in our youth services many of us we sing and we enjoy it, but especially that uh, we, it's so difficult to right now connect with the older generation, but it is uh, the breakthrough is happened and then with the coming of these uh, other three uh, uh, worship, uh, dynamic worship team, we can also learn and then we can, uh, this will be a bridge and then where we can able to bridge the younger generation and older generation in a very uh, specific, in a good way to glorify God's name. So th this will be my message and then I will, uh, since uh, the time is also running very fast, so I will just end here and then, yeah, uh, I would like to request uh, one, a friend uh, who have just uh, draw one thing. Oh, can you please come? Yeah, uh, he he uh, do prophetic art, and then uh, to my our friend that uh, they also do uh, prophetic dance, and then yeah, uh, uh, the hand uh, paint. Uh, while we were having a time of uh, practicing this song, uh, yeah, uh, he has uh, uh, yeah art this, and then uh, today uh, he has art. Uh, the, the red one. So uh, let him explain one or two things and shall we give hand to our brother Pohe? Uh, the face of Jesus for me signifies his love and his uh, sacrifice. And the other picture, the second picture, it signifies how uniquely we are created in the image of God and also. Mm, you can refer to Psalms 8. And the third image today's uh, picture, it uh, signifies the righteousness of God. Amen. We give honor and glory to our Lord. <laughs> yeah, God has put me in my heart while I was praying. I think uh, God will put uh, some of you, uh, maybe a vision or yeah, a heart to even uh, do art. And some of you will do even a uh, dance. Some of us here are going to write songs as well. So, and then uh, some of you are going to sing spiritual songs you have, you have never sang before. And some of you are going to uh, speak in tongues as well. That is what yeah, God has been putting in my heart. And I know that uh, as we continue to worship the Lord, he is going to open uh, many things. That is what I believe. So give honor and glory to our Lord. Amen.